Welcome to the Radio Vault Mystery Theater. I am the Keeper of the Vault. There is a common saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The actions we often take affect others in ways we are not aware. Sometimes to their benefit, but other times may cause their demise. Finding the right balance of what is helpful and what is hindering is a delicate chore. Our story tonight is full circle. Act 1. Jeremy Robertson had lived what most people would consider a rough life. His parents were abusive to him from a young age, and he had fallen into drug addiction. As it turned out, fate dealt him bitter cards. But finally, he had gotten the help he needed at the Heath Marlow Center. After being released, he was able to hold down a job, live a respectable life, and most importantly, deal with his demons. He enjoyed evening walks to relieve the tensions of the day, many times talking to himself. I'm glad most of the flashbacks are gone. All those sleepless nights, cold sweats, I am glad I have found ways to cope. Ah, uh, oh, here we are, Smokey's Diner. Time for coffee and pie. Hi, Jeremy. Same booth? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'll be back in just a second. Take your time. Let me guess. Chamomile tea and a slice of apple pie? <laughs> you must be psychic. It's time for me to start paying back, I think. I mean, a lot of people help me to cope with things. It is time to come full circle. Here you go, hon. There's your check. Call me if you need me. Smokey's was just down the street from Jeremy's apartment. He liked the cold walks during the winter in the neighborhood. It seemed to clear his head better. As he approached his apartment, Jeremy saw his new neighbor, Erica Mills, a single mother struggling with her crying baby and groceries. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, Mikey's a little cranky tonight. No problem. You're handling it well. Sometimes a person just needs a little boost. It's okay, little man. Mommy loves you. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Thank you. What an amazing mother. The soothing sound of Erica's song seemed to calm Jeremy as well. Soon, he drifted to sleep. End of Act One. Now, Act Two. Sleep did not bring peace to Jeremy. Rather, it brought horrible flashbacks of his abusive childhood that pushed him to the drug use that cost him years of his life. He awakened drenched in sweat. He sat up in bed, rocking back and forth, chanting a mantra. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The past can't hurt me. I am a strong man. I live in the now. The past can't hurt me. I am a strong man. I live in the now. The past can't hurt me. I am a strong man. I live in the now. The past can't hurt me. I am a strong man. I live in the now. <sighs> oh, man. 
got to get to work. Good morning, Darla. The past can't hurt you. You are a strong man and you live in the now. What? 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 <laughs> Hello? Join us here on Earth? <laughs> I just said good morning to back to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning. Jeremy kept having flashbacks as the day progressed and began looking forward to his evening walk to clear his mind. During his walk, Jeremy came upon a filthy man in the street. Obviously homeless reminded him of how he was just a few short years ago. He approached the man. Hi, I'm Jeremy Robinson. What's your name? Uh, my name is Harry Simmons. Pleased to meet you, Harry. You look hungry. Can I buy you dinner? Thank you so much. I am so cold and, and hungry. The two men talk over a modest meal at Smokey's Diner. Harry told Jeremy of how he had been framed for stealing from a company by a co-worker named Mark Branson. He had done some jail time. His wife left him, and when he got out of jail, there was nowhere for him to go. So we got lost in the bottle and ended up on the street. After dinner, the two men walked toward Jeremy's apartment. I'd like to help you, Harry. Will you take a ride with me? Well, yeah, yes. Where are we going? It's a surprise. Really, Harry, you'll like it. Here we are, Harry. Heath Marlowe Center. This, this is where I healed. They can help you get your life back. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Jeremy drove home that night with a sense of satisfaction knowing he'd help someone. Lying in bed that night, he could hear the muffled sounds of Erica singing to Mikey, and he closed his eyes with a smile on his face. Then suddenly he was awakened. He sat up in bed and rubbed his eyes. There was a dark silhouette standing at the foot of his bed. It spoke in a deep voice. That's it. What? Do you really think your work is done? What else is there for me to do? Justice must be served. A life for a life. Harry didn't make it through the night. You must serve justice on Mark Branson. End of Act Two. And now, a word from our sponsor. Top scientists agree that with the present rate of consumption, the Earth's supply of gravity will be exhausted before the 24th century. 
As man struggles to discover cheaper alternatives, we need your help. Please, conserve gravity. Follow these simple suggestions. 1. Walk with a light step. Carry helium balloons if possible. 2. Use tape, magnets, or glue instead of paperweights. 3. Give up skiing and skydiving for more horizontal sports like curling. 4. Avoid showers. Take baths instead. 5. Don't hang all your clothes in the closet. Keep them in one big pile. And 6. Stop flipping pancakes. And now, Act 3. Jeremy made sure that Mark Branson paid for taking Harry's life with his own life, making it look like a suicide. Jeremy continued doing as the dark silhouette instructed him for years. He felt great pride in serving justice to those who had ruined others' lives. One night, while he was out on his usual walk, he came upon a young homeless woman. He approached her in his usual way. Hi there. You look like you could use a hot meal. Let me at least buy you some food. I won't have sex with you. I just want to help. After dinner, we can go our separate ways. Deal? Okay, but if you try anything, I'll shank you in a heartbeat. No, no problem. Take it easy. Let's walk. We're just going down the street there to Smokey's Diner. You see it there? Okay, but why me? Well, I was once in your shoes, and I like helping others. Hi, Jeremy. Your usual booth is open, right this way. This is delicious. Thank you so much, mister. Jeremy, please call me Jeremy. So what is your story? How did you end up on the street? I might be able to help you. I have been there before. A few years ago, my father committed suicide. He was my whole world. I kind of got lost first in alcohol, then heroin. I lost everything. I can never go back. There's a place that can help you. I can take you there. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't ask your name. It's Brenda Branson. You don't fool me. I know what you want. Do you think you were the only one to offer to feed me and help me? Leave me alone. Wait! Ow! Jeremy walked home, rubbing his stinging face. He thought of the many people he had helped. He thought about his neighbor, Erica, and her little baby, Mikey. Even though they had long since moved, Jeremy could still hear the soft sound of her singing the lullaby to him every night. As he approached the condemned building where he lived, he felt the cold wind blow. He sat in the corner of his apartment and started talking to himself. Mark Branson. That must have been her father. What is that? It has come full circle, Jeremy. Don't be a coward. Do what needs to be done. Justice must be served. My gun. The only friend. I have left in this world. I am not a coward. Sometimes we don't understand the dire consequences of what one action can be. One man's justice can be another man's injustice. In the end, it will all come Full Circle. Full Circle is a production by Troop of Lost Souls Entertainment and Film Syndicate. 
Written by Charlie Mitchell. Produced by Anthony Stapiello and directed by Rick L. Baker. Post-production sound effects by Brian Collins. Commercials by Joe J. Thomas. Video post by Stephen Shin. The cast was played by J. Anthony McCarthy as Jeremy Robinson. Rhoda Pell as Carla. Stephanie Warren as Erica Mills. Ricky Yvette Westmoreland as Darla. Terry Larned as Harry Simmons. Joe J. Thomas as the Dark Silhouette. Joyce Lynn Liu as Brenda Branson. And I am Trevor Bates, your psychotic storyteller and keeper of the vault. See you next week, if you dare.